Welcome builders and modelers. This is channel Build and Relax. And as for my first reveal, I'm going to reveal the Master Grade Unicorn Full Armor Gundam. Uh, what's so special about it is I actually did modification on my own to make it my own version of the Unicorn Gundam. And what did I do? Voila! I installed it. LEDs throughout the entire cycle frame as it would try to replicate the look on any anime show. And let's go over how I did it. Actually, I gotta give credit to Model452 who came up with this idea um, and willing to share them. I thank you for that. Um, but I'm just gonna go over again what this is. Uh, it's actually a hard day light, it's from hard day time. Free function LEDs, ultra slim. This one is the ma uh, soft white color. The one that he used actually was a wet uh, LED bulb because he actually built the initial wet cycle frame version, which kind of works out to to his liking. I choose to do it to the uh, full awakening mode because this is actually my favorite. I like this teal color much better than the wet color, but that's only my my own preference. The advantage of doing it this way is, one, everything is done for you. There's no soldering involved. Um, everything is done through the string of light. Is actually, as you can see here, is actually designed to use for weave. Which means there are actually other hidden functions involved besides the constant light up mode. There's so many. You can actually also do... Flashing and fading on and fading off, it can uh, keep rotating. Another advantage of doing it this way is when it's on the constant on mode, it actually has a built in timer in which it will turn off automatically after six hours. That way, if you choose to leave it on when you go to bed, that's just what I would do. <laughs> no judging. Uh, it will automatically turn off and stay off when I wake up. So again, this is a how they light. It came pre-assembled, just like any Christmas tree light as well. Uh, this one is 36 LEDs. Each of them are equally spaced. Uh, I guess about 2 inches. The hard thing about it is, is you have to build, assemble your model um, according to how you got, where you got put it. And you have to kind of build your model around it instead of the usual around when you um, install the LEDs using the conventional method of soldering. You, you, you install the LEDs into the model and then you do soldering. This way is actually the reverse, uh, the LEDs are done for you and you actually put your cycle frame around each one where you want to put it. So it's important to plan ahead. How I did is I go over from the white leg into the quatch, then go from the, from the waist section into the torso, goes through the white arm. Goes back into the, the backpack of it, the head, and then goes to the left arm, goes back into the back of the torso, and then it goes back down to the leg and goes up. Um, the reason I want to do this is because I want to have the wire coming out from the lower back, as most of the uh, LED models that you can get in the market today. Now, Here's the difference. I want to reveal the articulation of it, which usually people who install LEDs usually say they turn it into a brick kit. I can't disagree. There are some movements that are actually still usable, such as the weight section. You can still turn it around. Um, just don't overdo it. Even, even though these are really sturdy wires because it's used for exterior weave Christmas decorations. It is actually possible to yank it and break them and since it's hooked up in a series if you 
break one of them, everything before that uh, is going to turn off. So keep that in mind. These are very thin wire. The thinnest wire I've ever seen is I usually work with 28 gauge wire and these are much more thinner. In fact, it, the insulation seems to be painted on the wire itself. There's no, the, the, you cannot feel the insulation. You're more like feeling just the wire itself and it seems to have a coating on it. Now back to the articulation. You still have the leg movement, not much. If you install more, if the length of the wire has more uh, on the back side, you might be able to move more, but uh, I wouldn't bother because, well, you face it. Most of the time, you're not going to be posing it with the leg up or, or vice versa. You got to put in the usual pose. You know, everyone's preference is different, but everyone usually have one more, one pose or the other that they prefer and they just will leave it like that. So anyway, the leg still have some bends right here. Not a lot, but well, face it, you, even the straight bill unicorn it wasn't meant to be doing that kind of much bending already. The leg, the, well, the arm can still swing up and down. And to me, it's kind of important because the pose I'm want to do is actually doing the, the protection pose, the one in the last episode of the Unicorn when he and the Banshee are uh, trying to protect the Lapasso box from the colony space laser cannon. So for me, that's important that he can do it. Um, and looking at the back, the backpack is also light up by two LEDs. You can still Partially, it can still transform. Now I want to talk about, well, this is actually my first uh, photo type of uh, installing LEDs on this unicorn, which is, well, I would say not a very steep learning experience. However, it's still difficult sometimes. I find the arms to be the most difficult because compared to the legs, it's actually very thin and there's not much space, I would say no space at all at the inner frame of the arm to do so. So the only location I could do was actually between the add-on, um, the well, I would say the beam saber holder and the arm itself. That's the only gap I found I could put in. And of course being kind of washy here, I showed the why I installed the wires coming out from the back of the arm instead of from the front. Uh, I mean, inside the arm. Um, so they didn't do a good job there, but this is my very first model, so go easy on me. <laughs> the leg itself is actually one of the easiest to install the LEDs. I was able to install four of them. One here, one here, and two over here. And if I turn it to the side, you can see when it's on destroyer mode, which you gotta keep it on most likely when you install LEDs anyway, you gotta have a huge gap in here. Actually, you can still transform it. If I push it in, it can still go in. If you're looking at it, see how much I push in a little bit. So believe it or not, you can still do transformation on most of the parts. You can still close the panel, you can still collapse. When I first built this torso with the LED in it, it's actually on, on Unicorn mode. I just installed, after I installed the LED, I expanded into Destroy mode before I move on. There are actually gaps in the die here. It's almost like if they, it's meant for you to install LEDs, but that's wishful thinking, of course. I, now, the only thing I can say you cannot do um, when you want to try and transform it back to Unicorn mode is, the, is this part. Because I installed one LED here that actually will will hinder from collapsing. It's in a way where the um, this piece right here collapsed uh, back into Unicorn mode. So I haven't done any glue at all, any no cutting, no glue, and that's the beauty of it too, I would say. I put the LED here so when you have the front skirt when in front, you can see the light peeking through, although not as much. I think I do a bad job here. Let's 
slide this down. You can see the LED but it's just underneath it. Now if I if I want to I can either put a sticker or glue it to the back skirt so that it will not slide over the place. But if you keep it stationary and it actually stands, it's pretty good. Now the head which the yellow fin had painted. Oh. It still can transform because it's still let me put this back. So I guess I pushed a little bit too hard when I tried to take off the head, but uh, trust me, it's actually not because I put in LED that makes the model unstable. I'll I'll talk about that some more in a little bit. But uh, looking at the head, you actually still have that gap in. No, no matter you put in as the unicorn mode or the destroy mode. And you simply just put in the head back to where it belongs and have the LED in there. Snap. Simple as that. So it's actually not as hard as you think. Now, as I said before, this is my first prototype of the unicorn that I managed to put LED in. Now I want to bring in my second one, which is the Banshee, the regular Banshee. This one I did a much better job. Well, first I was much more sturdy. I can shake it all I want and nothing will fall off. It can stand pretty well on its own too. And the other improvement I made this time is I made sure that I have the wires high inside the cycle frame here, as you can see. I still managed to have the LEDs on the arm, same place as before, same place of the backpack, but you don't see the wires running through the back like the Unicorn for Armor. Another improvement I made is I installed LEDs on the back of the leg too, so you can see there's none over here, over here. There's something I need to do and learn from a mistake and improve. So, let me move him back. So, if you don't like the wire from being permanently attached, there are ways to either hide it or might try to make it better. One way is to install, to have an action base and you will put the wire inside the action base, which is the one of the reasons why I designed to have the wires come sticking out from the back. So if you, if I actually wait to show, I will show you, but um, I don't have it right way now, but you can kind of imagine, typically it's just like other LED models out there, some of them are third party, you will have the action base stick up from the back of the crouch and then they have the wires installed within. You can still have the controller unit either mounted on the bottom of the stand or just put it on top in, right in front then you will have a switch that you can do. Oops. Not too worried about this one because this model is really sturdy. Installing the LED does not change it. It's just like my first model it just turns out to be more loose than I wanted. But the Banshee is a much better improvement in terms of my skills. Another way is to use a launching base. If I put it on an action base, and if you recall, move the unicorn out of the way for a sec. You can pretend that this is one of the cables that's attached to him when he launches. You can wrap uh, electrical tape around just to cover the LEDs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
bother to do that, I don't mind. So that's another way. If that still doesn't work for you, another option, you have to put in a little bit extra work, is to get some of these. Now, uh, now here's the rule of thumb. Every time you get electrical wires or any components, you usually try to get in bulk because doing so will save you a lot of money if you want to do this for future projects. It doesn't cost that much. This whole thing actually only costs $6. And you get a dozen of each. So you will have this one side of this, uh, either male or female, attached to where the wires come from the back of the crouch. You will shorten it to however you want and so you can hide it. And then this part will be attached to the battery side. You will have to do some soldering. But once you can manage to pull it off, you will be able to attach. Make sure I got this right. And detach. Now, I probably won't be doing that because I actually don't mind to stay like this. If I had my Banshee or Unicorn for one more display, I pretty much just want it to be on the light up cycle frame mode. Now the accessories, uh, the Banshee's weapon and the core, I did not bother installing LEDs because I probably don't want to keep him in this mode. I do have the Unicorn Shield as you like, what we know, some of you. the When you buy the regular Banshee, you actually get the pox to make the shield. And I actually went and got a third party Armor DE to come along with it. Now, the rival, the Magnum rival, uh, Magnum beam rival, I should say, uh, I could just take one from the Unicorn for Armor. He came with two, so one of them can be given to Banshee. And just doing that, you'll have the Unicorn uh, Banshee norm. The only thing that's missing is the, the, the main and the back of it, which I really don't care. And that's about does it. All in all, I don't think this is a replacement for the perfect way. The perfect way is still superior to me, as the price will suggest you get what you pay for, as they say. Because the perfect way you can still transform and into unicorn and destroy more back and forth in between without having to mess with the LEDs. This one is not a hundred percent um, transformation. There are some limitations. If you, if I did not install the LEDs here, probably I can make it close to 100%, but it still won't be the same. I still will have the problem on the arms here that if I'm collapsing, there's no space for the LED anymore. I probably have to put it, hide it somewhere. So it's not, it's not a perfect solution. However, with with the budget, it's actually not that bad. the The cost of these LEDs it used to be retail for five dollars in Walmart. I got it for eight dollars on eBay. Uh, just unfortunately, these are no longer sold in stores. And, and I hope one day they will come back. I think I might have seen it in Michaels, but um, it varies from different Michaels store to store. Now, lastly, last but not least, I want to sh turn off the light and show you how it looks like in the dark. Folks, this is the best light light you can have ever. And again, if you want to leave it like this, you don't have to worry about draining the battery because it turns off after 6 hours. I'm very pleased with how it turns out.
get a closer look with the Banshee. Right now, my Banshee is, is my prefer of the two, just because I think I did a much better job on him. One thing that's interesting about it, first let me turn the lights back on, is that some people complain that the Banshee psycho frame is too orange. And it is. However, when you install these white LEDs underneath the soft white LEDs, it actually makes the color more yellow. And that's unexpectedly more accurate because I think on the on the show it's more yellow than orange. Well the white LED makes the orange more lighter, so it turns into a much more closer to yellow than it there is in orange. Uh, and they can mention that the that I uh, have it painted the gold metallic gold because I don't like the pure yellow. Oh, I did it in both. I want to mention the carpet. I actually did install LED inside as well. Let's show you that. Ends and ready inside. There is actually a LED inside. I find that very important that I put one in, even though most of the time I'm gonna have the carpet closed. I won't see it, but I just need to envision that there's an NTD, so it will light up inside the carpet. That's my personal preference. So I stir the kit. It stands out pretty well. So that does it for my review. You have any question? Feel free to ask. I'll do the best I can. I do. I did this video because I think that some of these um, work. Some some models deserve a, a second look. Uh, every time you make some improvement, I doing it this way. Have it to light up LED. I have to show it to many people, and I want to show the articulation. Take a step beyond and show more than just the. The brick itself, that is the model, is actually not a complete brick. It still has the articulation. It still can transform to a good extent, surprisingly. And well, I hope to share this joy with every model and builders out there that it can be done. It doesn't cost that much. It only costs the base model kit uh, and eight dollars. Maybe you can get it cheaper. Well, well, give up, give a couple of bucks or two, but it won't cost you more than ten dollars to have the LEDs. Uh, you have to put in the extra effort, but it's actually not that hard because you don't have to do soldering. And when you soldering, actually takes a lot of time. That this kit um, with the building from scratch and with the LEDs, it it took me initially for this guy, took me about ten hours. But when I did it with Banshee, I did a much better job. It took me about six to seven hours, so usually not, not even that much longer than building from scratch. Uh, of course, I still this is actually still a uh, in progress work. I haven't I haven't put in the decals yet. I probably still have to do some panel lining. Um, but I don't I don't want to wait. I want to show this to the world so they can benefit from it and want to share my joy of, of turn, turning it to in, in, in a light up cycle frame which I think is much more impressive than painting over just a um, metallic color or, or a brilliant color. So, um, so this video has gone long enough, which is why I haven't I'm decided not to review all the accessories and whatnot. Now, the one thing I still need to work on is the shield funnels for the unicorn. If I want to duplicate that scene at the end with the with the colony laser um, shooting and, and the unicorns are trying to protect it. I probably still have to install LEDs on this one. However, this one I probably will do a soldering, a circuit that's working because it's it's not that, it doesn't need that much LEDs, probably maybe six of them. Just have it on one side. So that one I probably will not using the, the, the weave likes here. Will be done differently. I'll try to do it. If I once I done it, I'll post a, another video showing how how it's done and what's the end result. So thank you guys. 
Any questions, post it in the comments. I'll try to answer as best as I could. And guys, one last thing. Do not stop building. Thank you. See ya.